Board Game Brody here with Let's Table It, where we love getting games to the table, just like this one. Looks like you are interested in checking out what comes inside this box of Archaeologic by Ludonaut Games. Now, as you watch me open the game to show you the components, let me explain to you what this game does, why you might be interested in it. The game is designed by Johan Lever, who also helped design Turing Machine that received a lot of attention in the past. Now, maybe that's why you're here checking out this game now, because it was a very successful game that he designed in, with that one, with Turing Machine, and now you want to see what this one does, which is totally fine. I haven't played Turing Machine myself, but I'd love to, but just haven't had the opportunity yet. But I have heard that it has some of those similar feelings with this game. Taiwanaku also has this circle kind of decoder mechanism thing, but it also plays differently. So it's a different game as, you know, that one's kind of has a Sudoku type feel. And this one is more closely related to the Turing machine. In Archaeologic, players will compete against each other to be the first player to figure out the correct layout for their six tiles that represent buildings in a city. These tiles can be positioned in different places on their grid board, but also can be facing different directions as well. The game includes an arthroscope, this gadget, which you will see me trying to put together later, but it is used in the game to help you figure out the correct information on what the placements of those tiles should be. The Archaeoscope is a very sophisticated research device that will never fail you. You will ask it questions and it will give you valuable information on the position of buildings and possible traps and about empty zones, as not all spaces on the grid will be covered with tiles. Asking the arthroscope is a long process, and the more complex your question is, you know, the longer it'll take. And you will need to think and then ask the right questions. This is a game where deduction is required, and the better you can wrap your brain around a lot of the different information that it gives, the better you'll do and be able to figure things out. So you will use your deduction skills and logic to be the quickest player to place the buildings in the correct places on your grid. Tiles need to be placed within the 5x5 five five grid. All six tiles need to be set on the board. There are four sharp trap boxes somewhere and four fire trap boxes somewhere, and that's for all the buildings combined. And there will be always three empty zones on the map without buildings somewhere on that grid. You can use the app to play the game as well, which might, you know, make things feel a little bit faster and cleaner, but you might decide that the app isn't your thing, and you can definitely just play the game perfectly with no problems without using the app. So some of the things about the game, turn order, it does not follow a specific order, and there's a time track that determines which player will take their turn. If you are last on the track, then it's your turn. And on your turn, you ask a question, and it'll make you lose time or use time moving your pawn forward. And so you potentially could take two turns in a row if you move forward, and you are still the furthest behind on the track. So a turn goes like this. You will move a marker that highlights either a number or a letter. Letters refer to a column of the grid, and numbers represent the rows on the grid. You can move it once or choose that you want to move it wherever you want, but they will cost differently. You know, if you move it wherever, it's going to cost more. Cost is spent by moving your pawn more forward, so potentially giving other players the chance to ask more questions before you can ask another one. You will choose a question which will focus on buildings, on traps, or empty zones. And then you will ask how many are on the selected axis. This will be, you know, one to five. How many small buildings of a specific type are on a selected axis, which could be zero to three. Or how many big building tiles of a specific type are on the selected axis, which can be zero to three as well. Each of those will cost differently as well, and so you potentially can use a lot of time asking some specific questions, while other times you might want to, you know, not use a lot of time to be able to ask more questions. The arthroscope will reveal the answer by moving the blue sector on the position matching the item that you asked about. The chosen coded card used for your current game is then placed 
in the site and the answer is then revealed. Players are then encouraged to write down as much information as they can and they will slowly create their own city map and they will need to recall all this information at some point to be able to do well and be able to figure out the correct placement. If you think you've figured out the exact layout, then at the beginning of your turn, you can flip over your, your pawn to the other side, move it forward four spaces, and then set the layout of buildings on your grid behind your screen so no other players can you know see it. And then all the other players will continue until your pawn is then in the last position. Then you will figure out if you were right or wrong. If you're wrong, then the other players continue playing and you are out of the game. But if you are right, then you will win the game. I hope this gives you a good idea of the game. If you have any questions, please comment below. Again, Brody with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. Please like and subscribe. We are doing these videos so that you know if these games are ones you want to get to your own table.